Isso que eu... Suki realizes that she's not quite as over Bill as perhaps she thought, and an unintended consequence of saving Bill's life is that she gives Eric his memory back. So all of this really kind of beautiful, romantic, Eric innocent and childlike and, and so warm, we call him emo Eric, that's gone. It remains to be seen is, is the love that they felt for each other, can it exist in a world where he remembers who he is? So what's the problem? Bill. So he's realizing, I'm in love with two men. How do I deal with that? We'll find out. Marnie, once she invited Antonia to possess her and was taken over, the weird thing is that Marnie found herself in the most powerful, intimate relationship that she's ever been in by sharing her body with a 400-year-old dead spirit. <laughs> she's an outcast. She hasn't had friends around her. She's grown up very lonely. And now she has Antonia, who has given her a friend and a sister. I think Marnie's actually a very sympathetic character in that she's so lonely and so sheltered. And so she gets a taste of power and she gets a taste of intimate emotional communion. She cannot let that go. They are cruel. They are bullies. They treat you like a pariah. And so being a compassionate person, Antonia says, OK, um, I will stay with you. But whether that is a lifelong alliance remains to be seen. After this horrible night of violence at the Dorchester, we find out that Bill is going to get rid of Marnie at all costs. Uh, but the collateral damage is huge. Blowing up Moon Goddess Emporium is not a 21st century solution. Blowing up Moon Goddess? You can't do this. Tara and other humans are in there. What I love about Suki and Jason and Lafayette and Jesus taking it upon themselves to go and figure out a way to get into Moon Goddess is because it's all about their friends. Obviously the show is larger than life and has a, has a real genre feel to it and everything, but I think the fact that people are willing to make a sacrifice to try to save other people that they care about um, grounds it all in a way and, and makes it emotionally understandable. I think the thing that was the most challenging to wrap my mind around in this episode was what this protection spell would be. It was even trying to find the words to describe what it is that Marnie was able to do, what it might look like, and if you interacted with this spell, what would happen to you. Certain things in terms of attributes of creatures, magical creatures, that have been around since the beginning, yes, there are ways that the fangs appear. You know, and when I first came in to direct True Blood, those are things people can tell you. But every time there's a new creature, you have to develop what that world is gonna be. And that's really exciting. Tell me what I have to do. Come to me. Jesus decides he's the only one that can go through the protection spell into Marnie. He's taken his family's tradition of dark brujo magic into himself, and he spent his whole life trying to avoid it. Now he finds himself in a situation to save himself and to save those that he loves, he's got to dig into that dark, dark magic, and it's scary. Of course, Suki goes and ends up being inside Moon Goddess right as they're about to launch a full-out attack. These vampires are reduced to pulling up in a big black SUV and piling out with traditional weapons, including a grenade launcher. And this attack is being led by Bill and Eric, the two men who are in love with her. So it's all kinds of complicated which uh, I think is why we like the show so much. 